Today we have a solar panel test meter, and I don't think you should buy these because they're pretty expensive. These range in price from $60 to $100, and they're pretty useless for most people, especially if you buy new panels. If you have hundreds or thousands of used panels that you want to test, or you have a YouTube channel about solar, this is a really cool tool. So what it does is it has an MPPT tracking algorithm that will find the power point on the IV curve and it will spit out a working voltage result and a working current. If you combine those, you will get a power in wattage output or the max output of that panel at that instantaneous moment. And I can see if the voltage and the current matches the data sheet for the solar panel. But yeah, pretty overpriced and pretty useless for most of my viewers, but it will be really fun when we have new panels. And today I have new solar panels. And today we have some new solar panels. And both of these solar panels came from Signature Solar, but they look exactly the same. But on the left, this is manufactured by ET Solar, which is the same manufacturer of the bifacial solar panels. And this is rated for 375 watts. And on the right, this is manufactured by Rennie Solar, but it's only rated for 370 watts but they have the same number of cells, the same number of bus bars. They look identical, even the rails are identical. So let's hook them up to the meter and see which one produces more or less than the other. Honestly, I think they're gonna produce the same. I think these are just relabeled. I could be wrong, but I mean, look at those things. They're pretty much identical. So now we have one of each panel and two solar panel test meters, but we need to ensure that these are accurate. So let's hook up a Renogy Eclipse. And it's only 10 a.m. It's 100 degrees right now, but I don't think the sun's high enough to hit STC output. But let's just try it anyways and see if our results match. This is cool. <laughs> How cool is that test station? So first meter says 91.5 watts. Let's plug in the second one, 93.6. So let's plug it back in again to the other one, 90. So this one shows less wattage. All right, let's try the other one again, 92.6. So this one always shows like 2% higher results than this one, unfortunately. Dang it, what a bummer. Should we use my old Victron system? That thing was super accurate. So let's hook up our Victron meter and see what it reads. And the Victron is giving me 94 to 95 watts. And we can graph it over time. That's why I used this system previously, I just remembered. So we're gonna stick to this because this is more accurate. And these are just cheaply made. It's also hard to read the display in sunlight. And yeah, I trust the results from a Victron over a cheap Chinese meter any day. So let's hook up a 24 volt battery to the Victron and test out the large panels. So first panel is the ET solar module. It's pulling 287 watts, but that is not even close to STC output. So let's hook up the other solar panel. Actually, let's try angling the ET panel and see if we can increase the output. Now it's perpendicular to the photons, 292, so not that great, not that great. So the tilting did not help that much, maybe like a 1% increase. And I could cool down this panel, but I think that's cheating. So let's just get the other panel on there and see what happens. No way, really? 324 watts from the Rennie solar panel. 324 watts. Let's let it soak in the heat for a bit and see if that decreases. It decreased by two watts and now the panel is hotter, but man, these numbers are much higher. 322 watts right now. This thing looks identical to the ET solar panel, but this output is much better. 321 is the lowest. I'm gonna swap it out for the other panel and see if we can get better results. We should test some more Rennie solar panels. That is incredible. I need to get some Q cells also and Canadian solar. I'm, I've been slacking. I wonder if Signature Solar tests these panels individually. So ET solar panel test two, but it's been cooled off in the shade. So it should increase the output a little bit. Ooh, 308 watts. So the ET solar panel is doing much better now that it's cooled off a bit in the shade, but it's not doing as well as the Rennie solar, but that's a small difference. It's only like 12 to 14 watt difference. Now the panel is hot and it's pulling 307 watts, which is still 
less than the Reni Solar. So let's come back when it's peak irradiance and see what the max output that we can get from each panel. But yeah, so far the Reni Solar won this test. Now we're at peak irradiance for the day and we're gonna hook up some cold panels and see if we can hit STC output. So first panel is Reni Solar. 346 watts already, but it's still tracking the PowerPoint, so give it a second. 344, 345, 348. Yeah, 348 is the best I got, and now it's slowly dropping because the panel's heating up. Now let's put the other one on. 348. Now we have the ET panel. 341, no way. 339, 341, that's the best I'm getting, guys. But to be realistic, that is practically the same output as the other panel. But this one has less output than the Rennie solar panel. I don't know why. And now it's dropping. Now we're at 337. And this one's rated for 375. So even though that one's rated for 5 watts less, I produce like 10 watts more with the Rennie solar panel. Now to have some form of control group, let's use the Renogy Eclipse and see if we can hit STC output. We're pulling 101 watts. So again, this thing always pulls the STC output no matter what. And 88 watts this morning at 9 a.m. It was like 9 to 10 a.m. consistently pulling 88 watts. 101, 102. So as always, the Sun Power cells have the best output, but they are very expensive, just so you know. So I just pulled these panels from the garage and they are not the ones that we tested earlier. And we are at absolute peak irradiance and these are cold. So we should have STC output in theory. I did notice that the ET solar panel does have a different back sheet and it's less shiny than the Reno solar. So there is a difference between these and there's a different junction box as well. So first panel is an ET panel. This one's pulling 340 watts. That's the highest number I'm getting guys, 340. Oh, 341. Yeah, it's not rising. 341 is the max. Three forty-five, three forty-six. So from three forty-four to three forty-six, but the Rennie solar panels pull more than the ET solar panels every single time. Isn't that crazy? They look practically the same, but that's only a one percent difference. But over a course of a year, that does add up, and it makes me more of a fan of the Rennie solar panels. And these are only like one hundred and forty or one hundred and fifty dollars. Both are a really good deal. They will not produce as much as a Sun Power solar cell, but those cost a lot more. A Sun Power cell is like three to four times the cost of these. So both panels are really good, but I like the Rennie solar panel more, especially when the sun was lower. This was pulling a lot more in the beginning of my tests. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now let's talk about if you should actually buy these panels. I have Signature Solar here. We have the 410 watt bifacial, and then we have the two panels that we tested today. I still like the bifacials if you can mount them high up off of the ground and have an environment that can reflect light on the back. In that instance, these are a great deal. But for most people that are mounting these solar panels to a traditional roof or an RV, the panels that we tested today work really well, especially for the price. Even though the bifacial solar panels have an amazing output, they're $60 more than the panels that we tested today. And the panels that we just tested are also much cheaper than other panels on Amazon or other solar panel distributors. So for example, with a rich solar for $200, you get a 200 watt panel. For these, you get like a, let's call it a 350 watt panel to be fair. You get it for $145, but you have to pay the crate shipping. So it does not make sense to buy any of these panels unless you buy a lot of them. And that's why Rich Solar and Renogy and other solar panels online cost more. You're paying the shipping. And some people complain about the crate shipment cost, but it's still cheaper than other options available. You can just buy more panels than you need and sell them on Craigslist. I know you can sell these very easily on Craigslist. Also, there's a 325 watt polycrystalline, and I personally love polycrystalline. And those are only $119. So they have some pretty good deals. I mean, if you guys can find something better, please list them below. I want to jump on that affiliate program as fast as possible. But I think these are pretty good prices for these types of solar panels. These are all brand new. If you want used panels, then obviously go through Santan Solar. 
And if you're super rich, you should stick with SunPower solar cell panels. I don't think there's anything else on the market for the size, the weight, the efficiency, how long they last. Um, those and bifacials are my absolute favorite, but they do cost more. If you're just making a normal system and you want some new panels at a great price, personally, I would go with their polycrystallines, $119 for 325 watts. Typically with my polycrystallines, I always pull the rated STC output, but unfortunately they did not send me those. But yeah, I would go with those any day for the price. Also, I'm pretty bummed that these meters do not work. 2% is not acceptable. If I saw a 0.1% difference, I would accept that. But yeah, absolutely not. I cannot use that for test equipment, especially over a Victron. I might keep the most accurate one. I'll measure these and see if one's more accurate than the other so that I can test used panels. But I could just, you know, use my multimeter and test it anyway. So I don't really need this. It's nice and lightweight though, compared to carrying a battery in a Victron solar charge controller. But I feel pretty let down. I thought this was gonna work really well, actually. It's such a simple device. I mean, why can't it be more accurate? And that's pretty much it for this video. Super fun testing. I'm a bit sunburned. It was 113 degrees today. Okay, it was super hot. So anyways, I will talk to you guys soon and thank you so much for watching. Bye.